I'm not getting any views because YouTube won't give my video a chance. That's what most small creators say to themselves. But the truth is, your first video could go viral. You just need to know how to get your videos discovered. So let's talk about it. Thought I'd try a little bit of a different setup today for a more casual conversation. What do you think? Do let me know in the comments below. Now riddle me this. How many times have you watched a YouTube video and then instantly clicked on one of those recommended to you, even if it's not from the same channel? Well, the truth is YouTube is pretty much built on these recommendation systems and creators strive to get to the top of them, whether it's search recommendations or suggested videos. Now, just like the rest of YouTube, there are no shortcuts or hacks to the recommendation system because there are so many variables. But here are some things to consider as a creator. Now, viewers can discover your content in many different places on YouTube. Search, homepage, suggested. But we'll start with search. I'll tell you why in a second. Now, believe it or not, each user will see different search results, even if they type in exactly the same search query. This can be influenced by location, language, or if the viewer has already seen videos on a certain channel that answer similar search-based queries. But the key factors that you control as a creator are keyword relevance and performance of video. When it comes to search, YouTube relies a little bit more on metadata than it does elsewhere. This is because YouTube has more of an understanding of the viewer's intent because they've searched for something specifically. And when YouTube knows what your video is about, it's going to test it with audiences who are searching for those particular queries. And then YouTube can analyze the performance of the video, click-through rate, watch time, engagement such as likes and comments, viewer satisfaction from surveys. If your video appeals to and satisfies the people watching it, then YouTube is gonna bring it up the search rankings so that more people can discover it when they have that specific viewer intent. And so this is why new creators should focus a little bit more than usual on searched based content. It's going to help you target a very specific audience and YouTube by virtue of that search term is going to bring that exact target audience to your content. So try to include keywords in your titles whilst keeping them emotionally intriguing to the potential viewer. Be really strategic about what you write in the first couple of lines in your description. This is the section of the description you can see before you have to tap on see more. And here at vidIQ, we've got a brand new tool that can help you with that. All you need to do is type in a couple of words into our AI description generator, and this will create one or two paragraphs of keyword rich prose. You can even use it as the beginning of your script for a video, and it goes hand in hand hand with the daily ideas tool and the title generator. You can try all of this for free or get unlimited access through vidIQ Boost. There's a link in the description for more details. Whenever possible, you also want to provide accurate captions for your videos. I don't know if you've noticed this, but sometimes when you search for something on YouTube, it will bring back results based on what it finds in captions and it will tell you that. And from a viewer satisfaction point of view, most videos are watched on a mobile device, which means that they're not always in perfect audio listening environments. So we might have a sound muted, that's where your captions can help out. And if your content is very tutorial, how-to based, then you probably wanna use timed chapters. This will help the viewer navigate your content and make it a more satisfying experience. Now this is where the magic starts to happen. Once somebody has discovered your content through search and watched it, that video is now in their watch history. And once it's there, there is a high degree of probability that YouTube will surface more of your content to that viewer on the home page. That's because when a user finds themselves on the home page, they probably haven't decided yet what they want to watch. So YouTube's going to offer them a diverse range of content. So naturally, performance is going to be a key indicator as to whether or not your video shows up on home pages. But now, personalization is just as important. YouTube is showing on the home page what it thinks the viewer wants to watch based on watch history. If the viewer watched something from your channel based on a search query, then the next videos you make should be related to that search query. Now, it doesn't have to be a tutorial or a how-to. It could be entertainment, blog, storytelling. What you want that user to be saying to themselves is, I remember when this creator helped me with something when I was searching for it on YouTube. And now another one of their videos is appearing on the homepage and it looks really interesting. I think I'll watch that as well. Now, generally speaking, tips for optimizing your videos for the homepage are very similar to suggested videos. 
So let's take a look at that first. You've probably heard this figure before, but it does bear repeating. Around 70% of views across the entire YouTube platform come from recommendations. Yeah. YouTube has got really good at this. When suggesting videos to watch next, YouTube uses slightly different considerations. In addition to performance and viewer personalization, YouTube is likely to recommend videos that are often watched together. It will recommend videos on similar topics, and it may even recommend videos that have already been watched by the viewer. So with all of that being said, let's consider how to optimize your videos for the homepage and suggested. Make the beginning of a video highly engaging. This is where we're talking about that eight second hook. Eye catching visuals, bombastic audio, something interesting and intriguing. Establish quickly what the video is about and try to hint at what's coming up later in the video without revealing too much. And if you need any examples of this, you can watch this video up here or watch any of our videos from the last year and watch the first 20 seconds because we've been really driving home this concept of a powerful hook. Another signal to be conscious of is engagement. And what we're talking about here is likes, comments, shares. These types of signals show that the viewer isn't just passively watching the content. It's doing enough to encourage the viewer to partake in these micro calls to action. For example, notice how I asked a fairly simple, easy to answer question at the start of this video. That's why I did it. And then of course we have one of the biggest signals, watch time. This is a very general rule of thumb, but if you can get your audience retention above 50% on videos that are longer than three minutes, you're going in the right direction. But of course you don't want viewers watching just one of your videos. So you can use cards like I've already done to push viewers to more of your content end screens in particular, playlists, pin comments. You want viewers to stick around in your corner of YouTube as long as possible. And last, but certainly not least, titles and thumbnails. Pay particularly close attention to them as those are the first things your viewer sees, but probably the last thing you create when you make the video. So why have I left this until last? Well, because we've done an entire video dedicated to that topic, which you can watch over here. And that's us keeping you in the vidIQ corner of YouTube.